Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, September 7th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Brethren, Christ died for all, that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once regarded Christ from a human point of view, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is of a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, but entreating to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors of Christ, God making his appeal through us, who beseeched you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who know no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And the Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 16 through 22. At that time, Jesus, passing along by the Sea of Galilee, saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little while further, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and they followed him. And they entered and went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. And so day. Today we continue with uh, our reading of the Way of the Ascetics, chapter 7, on the transfer of love from the self to Christ. If we move out of ourselves, whom do we encounter? Asked Bishop Theophon. He supplies the answer at once. We make God and our neighbor. For it is this very reason that denying oneself is a stipulation, and the chief one, for the person who seeks salvation in Christ. Only so can the center of our being be moved from self to Christ, who is both God and our neighbor. This means that all the care, concern, and love that we now lavish on ourselves is often quite naturally, and without our noticing it, transferred to God and thereby to our fellow man. Only so is the left hand kept from knowing what the right hand doeth, and your alms are actually given in secret. See Matthew 6, chapter, chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Until this has come to pass, we cannot be filled with all knowledge, also to, to admonish one another, Romans fifteen fourteen, in a real, non-material way. Our attempts along this line must be false because they are our own and spring from our will to please ourselves. It is especially necessary to understand this, for otherwise we become easily confused on the road of speci specious helpfulness and smug well-meaning that leads inevitably to the swamp of self-satisfaction. Refrain from busying yourself, then, with charity bazaars, sewing meetings, and other such occupations. Busyness over many things is, in all its forms, chiefly a poison. Look within, examine yourself accurately, and you observe that many of these apparently self-giving deeds spring from a need to deafen your conscience, that is, from your uncontrollable habit of satisfying and pleasing yourself. See Romans 15, chapter, or chapter 15, verse 1. No, the God of love and peace and complete sacrifice does not care to live in the midst of bustling and a do to please oneself, even if this is carried out on perhaps under some kind of pretense. There is no one way to make a test. If your peace of mind is troubled, if you become dejected or perhaps a little angry, if for some reason you have to give up performing the good deed you have planned, then you know that the spring was muddy. Perhaps you ask why those who are experienced answer, external hindrance and opposition meet only the person who has not yielded his own will to God, and for God is an obstacle 
For God, an being an obstacle is unthinkable. A truly unselfish act is not mine, but God's. It cannot be obstructed. Only for my own plans, my own wishes, to study, to work, to rest, to eat, to do a service to my fellow countrymen, can some external circumstance get in the way. And then I am grieved. But for this, for, but for the person who has found the narrow way that leads to life, that is to God, there is only one conceivable hindrance, and that is his own sinful will. If he now wishes to do something, but is not permitted to carry it out, how can he grieve? For the rest, he is not making any plans. See James chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. But this is another of the saints' secrets. Do not be deceived. A Christian ought himself also to so walk, even as he walked, our Lord. See 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Who did not seek his own will. See the Gospel of John 5, 30. But was born on straw, fasted 40 days, watched in prayer long nights, though he... Uh, long nights through, excuse me, healed the sick, drove out evil spirits, had no place to lay his head, and finally let himself be spat upon, scourged, and crucified. Think how far you are from that. Ask yourself continually anew. Have I watched in prayer a single night? Have I fasted a single day? Have I driven out a single evil spirit? Have I unresistingly let myself be insul insulted and beaten? Have I truly crucified the flesh? See chap uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And not sought to keep my own will. Keep all of this freshly in mind. For what is denying oneself? He who truly denies himself does not ask, Am I happy or shall I be satisfied? All such questions fall away. Because when you truly deny yourself, for by so doing you have also given up your will for either earthly or heavenly happiness. This obstinate will to personal happiness is the cause of unrest and division in your soul. Give it up and work against it. The rest will be given to you without effect. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee, and may God bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you for joining me. You have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.